Cyclone Gabrielle provides us a grim reminder of the threat of climate change. So what can our main political parties offer when it comes to adaptation, bringing down emissions, repairing major infrastructure? For more, we're joined by our political panel, National MP Simeon Brown and Labor MP Adina Williams. Thank you both uh, for coming in on what is a pretty big week politically, mm. but also for everyone in this country. We all know someone who's mm. been impacted or lives in that area and is probably going through a bit of a tough time at the moment. Simeon, we've seen huge uh, devastation, slips, road blockages to major highways. Mm. Is this the time at which we say, OK, we get a few roads up and running, but we really have to have a conversation about some of those smaller areas on the Coromandel, perhaps and in Northland, where it is no longer viable to keep those communities going? Well, I think just to start with, I think it's been a devastating time for New Zealand this last week. And uh, my heart goes out to um, the families who have lost their loved ones, um, the firefighters' family out in Mutawai. Um, this is truly uh, devastating. And I think our first uh, thoughts have to be for those loved ones and their families. Um, but look, you know, this is, you know, climate change has um, having a big impact on our country. Um, and we do need to have um, a real conversation around how we deal with the impact of it. Um, our spokesperson for climate change, Todd Muller and Christopher Lux, and our leader, has been saying, look, we need to work together, bipartisan, around adaptation and how we fund it, uh, and those and those those big um, those big questions. But at the same time, um, we've got lots of small communities where we've got a sparse population. We need to make sure we connect these people back to the, the critical services that they have, roading, um, getting the, the, the power back on, getting the water back on, making sure they've got communications. That's the number one priority at the moment so that they're able to be back connected and um, so that we know they're all safe as well. So even after we ensure they're safe and we make sure that we know that they are all okay, you think repairing all of those roads and put it's a lot of money for a lot of years to come to get all of these roads back up and running. Look, I think there's a big questions around adaptation and how we how we manage that, what, how we plan that, how we fund that. Um, and those are questions that we do need to take a bipartisan approach to how we do it. I'm not going to be coming on the show to say, you know, these communities which are devastated, um, you know, what, what should and shouldn't be done. There's, there's a long way to go with that. But the reality is um, the first, and for, first thing we need to be focused on is making sure they've got the water, food, uh, electricity, um, they're connected back to communications. They need to make sure that they're safe. So those have to be the number one priority right now. Um, but there's a wider conversation we've got to have as a country. Yeah, but there is a wider conversation, as you totally, just said. Totally there's a wider conversation we would have as a country. These I mean, what big, do we do? These it's, are big cyclone, the climate crisis has arrived. And that has begun. Um, you know, the government has been leading with the Zero Carbon Act, and now. But the... it's not enough, is it? We, the moment has arrived. We heard James Shaw in Parliament make a very good point. We argued and bickered for so long about whether this was even a problem. We could punt it down the road, and we can't. That's why this we need it. that leadership to not only reduce emissions, which is what those emission budgets do now, and also have the conversation around adaptation. Um, and you're right, you know, we need to do more, and this government is positioned. We now have a framework which allows us to get to zero carbon goals by 2050 and to re keep reducing our carbon emissions, as well as having those conversations with communities which are most affected. Uh, my family are down in Tikaraka at the moment. They are growers, they grow food, their jobs are in forestry, mm -hmm. all of that region will be affected. But right now, those people feeling it most need to hear that the government is there to support them and that people like me out in other parts of the country, we love them. We're there to do our bit mm -hmm. when we can. To right. make sure that those people have a livelihood and that they can continue to live in some of these areas then, do we say, OK, actually, this is going to come down to market forces, that insurance companies will eventually say, we can't insure you, it's too close to the cliff. We've seen in Auckland some of the in reasonably wealthy yeah. areas sometimes, those cliffs have just shorn away with the impact of climate change. It's already here. Will we simply see that if we don't act quickly enough as a government, market forces will determine what happens. Well, there's a range of conversations that need to be had. Um, I think it would be imprudent to come here and say, this is what should happen. Um, but there's a range, whether it's insurance, whether it's government, whether it's local government. But you know, at the, same, at the same time, there's people who have property, they have businesses, they have farms, they have forests. Um, this is critical to our economy. Um, and we need to make sure that we support these people through it. Um, and we're, National's offering our support to the government. We're saying, uh, we're actually, the government's doing everything they can. Um, and we'll continue to support them through this uh, through this time because actually as a country we need to come together. Um, but also we need to talk about resilience in our infrastructure. And um, you know we, we, we see across our country the need to make sure our roading infrastructure is resilient so we can 
get uh, you know get people where they need to go, keep those but businesses we can't connected. Keep Mother Nature, so but at the same time, but we need to build resilience into the network and actually a real focus around that. So That's, these are these are be an endless bill. Though. These are big conversations that we need to have. But to say that you know these are these are small communities, but they're important communities to our country and to our economy. Uh, they they grow our food. They create jobs and opportunities, and so they need to stay connected. So we need to have a conversation around that. It's a big conversation, bigger than just you know a few minutes here, but at the same time, um, you know who pays for it, how it's funded, all of those things need to be discussed. I agree with much of what Simeon has said, but it's not true. We'll clip that up for that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's, it's not true that the conversation is a new one, as, as you've pointed out. I mean, the government started this work with the Zero Carbon Act. At the election last time, government, uh, that Labor promised that in government it would implement the findings of the Randerson Review, and part of that was around recommendations for adaptation. We have an adaptation plan now, but we do need to think about legislation which deals with some of these media issues, especially around insurance. For those people who are wondering, is government going to support me through this? The answer is absolutely yes. We have to find a bipartisan way to do that. But in the meantime, absolutely the Labor government is committed to doing that now. Right. Thank you both for coming in this morning. Thank I you. do appreciate it. I hope your family